all from India, so we know what monsoon means. It is the rain we get in the summer months, right? Where does the word monsoon come? Basically, it's either a Persian word, mausim, or an Arabic word called mausam, or even in Hindi we have uh, mausam, right? So at some point, the traders realize that you can use the winds to go towards India from uh, Africa and other parts of Western Asia. And to return, you will have to wait for the winter season when the, when the winds reverse. So because seasonally these winds reverse, they call them monsoon or mausam. So the Indian monsoon, as we know, is the most famous monsoon. Other, there are other monsoons. Basically, the most important ingredient for monsoons is that you have a landmass and a ocean nearby. Why? because the heat capacity of the land is much lower than the heat capacity of water and the ocean. So if you put the same amount of energy on the ocean and land, the land warms up much faster. And if you take away the energy source, it also cools much faster, whereas the ocean warms much more slowly and cools much more slowly. So now you imagine that the sun is going up and down during a day and moving north and south during a season, right? So if you look at this figure here, so here are the summer and winter seasons. So during the summer, when the sun is crossing the equator and coming into the northern hemisphere, the Indian land mass is getting heated because the sun is towards the northern hemisphere. Because it has low heat capacity, it warms much more than the Indian Ocean, which is sitting right there because of this difference in heat capacity. What happens? So as the land warms, the air begins to rise and it creates a low pressure. And since the ocean is warming, but much slower, it is at a cooler temperature. So it has higher pressure than land. So what should happen to the winds? Basically, the winds will go from high pressure to low pressure. So the winds want to go from the ocean towards the land in the summer months. And in the next figure, we will see that as the winds go from the ocean to land across the equator, the Coriolis effect comes into play. So we'll have to see how that works. But essentially, you are creating again convergence on land where air is rising. Remember, every time you warm the air, it rises, takes water vapor with it, and it needs convergence at the surface to replace the rising air. And the rising air expands, condenses, clouds, rain. That's our monsoon, right? In the winter, the exact, exactly the opposite thing happens. As the sun is moving south across the equator, land is cooling much faster than the ocean. So you have colder temperatures and higher pressures on land. So the air now wants to move from the higher pressure on land towards the lower pressure on the ocean, and we'll have to add Coriolis to this, okay? As in the Hadley cell, the rising air hits the tropopause and then comes back to the region where air is sinking, and the sinking air goes over the ocean, rises, hits the tropopause, and comes back. So this is kind of a Hadley cell over the Indian region. So it is like a local Hadley cell, except uh, like unlike the other Hadley cell we looked at, this is changing in season. So in, in the summer season, it's going in one direction. In the winter season, it's going in the other direction. So what is the Coriolis effect doing to the winds? So if you look at the winter months, when the winds are going from high pressure on land to low pressure on the ocean, as they move, they want to move south, Coriolis will push them to the right in the northern hemisphere. So you can see that they are becoming northeasterlies. As they cross the equator, obviously Coriolis will push them to the left. So they are becoming southwesterlies in this direction. So the winds are basically going like this in the winter hemisphere. By the same token, when you have low pressure here in the summer month and high pressure here, the winds want to go north. They are pushed to the left in the southern hemisphere. As they cross the equator, 
and want to go north, they are pushed to the right. So, these are called southwesterly monsoons or southwesterly winds because they are coming from the southwest over the Arabian Sea onto the Indian landmass, whereas here they are going from the northeast onto the ocean. They are called northeast monsoon or the winter monsoon. So, in the summer when it is hot, air is rising, you have rain. In the winter, we will see in a separate module that only a small part of India gets rain during the winter months, which is called the winter monsoon. We will look at it in a separate module. Thank you.